With free agency in full swing, it has me thinking about some teams across baseball who have lost some of their best players, specifically those who were not so great last year. And with all the movement going on across baseball, today I want to take a look at the 400 lost teams from 2022, and I want to go over who I think has the best chance at bouncing back in 2023. So with that in mind, let's get right into the video. First, let's start with the Washington Nationals. Coming into last season, the Nationals, while they had a star in Juan Soto, were still not expected to be great as the roster around him was putrid. And obviously being in full rebuild mode, they traded away Soto to the Padres for a boatload of prospects, many of which who are not ready for the big leagues just yet. So getting rid of a superstar for a lot of prospects who aren't yet ready for the big leagues isn't going to do much great to your big league roster. And their pitching wasn't so great either. They had the worst pitcher in baseball in Patrick Corbin who posted a 6 plus ERA on the season. So it's safe to say 2022 was a disaster for the Nationals as all in all they finished with the worst record in baseball at 55 and 107. And this offseason to no one's surprise they have not done much of anything. So going into next season I think they are still going to be one of the worst teams in baseball. Now let's look at the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds last season finished at 62 and 100. And while this record may seem awful at first glance, the Reds were off to a historically bad start, so only finishing with 100 losses, in my opinion, is honestly pretty impressive. They were one of the worst offensive teams in baseball, as their few reliable bats were injured throughout the year in Jonathan India and Tyler Stevenson. On top of that, Joey Votto had the worst season of his career, as he is getting up there in age, as he sits at 39 years old, and I don't think he's going to get much better going forward. But they do have some help on the way as they have some top-notch prospects in Noel V. Marte and Ellie De La Cruz who could make an impact as soon as next season. So with players like Tyler Stevenson and Jonathan India healthy along with the prospects on their way, I think they could be improved offensively next season. As for their pitching, it wasn't great either, but they do have some promise. Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo were both up and down and really inconsistent throughout the season, but I think they're going to be really good major league pitchers and I think they're going to be vastly improved next year. So as a whole, I don't see the Reds competing next year, but I think they could be much improved off of last year's record. Now let's take a look at the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates finished with an identical record to the Reds as they also finished with 62 wins and 100 losses. Now like every other struggling team, they had a pretty bad offense and some pretty bad pitching. I guess you could say they have some promise offensively as they have players like Key Brian Hayes and O'Neill Cruz. On top of that, they made two really good pickups in my opinion in Carlos Santana and Connor Joe but the Pirates are really going to miss Brian Reynolds who requested a trade just a couple weeks back and I don't think he's going to be a Pittsburgh Pirate in 2023. And as I just mentioned, their pitching isn't great but they do have Mitch Keller who was really good last season and I wouldn't be surprised to see him improve off of last year's numbers. But one pitcher can't make up whole rotation, in fact I think they're still going to struggle pitching wise. David Bednar is also a solid option in the bullpen but they still need much more help. As a whole, I do like the Pirates' promise a little bit this year. I think they could be slightly improved and maybe not lose 100 games, but I don't think they're going to be much better. And finally, let's go over the Oakland A's. The A's are similar to the Nationals in the sense that they're still at the beginning stages of their rebuild. In fact, this past week they traded away their best player in Sean Murphy for not too much of a return. And with Murphy gone, there are really no notable names on this roster. Their best offensive player is probably Seth Brown, and their best pitcher is probably Cole Irvin, two names you're probably not very familiar with. As for last season's record, they finished with 60 wins and 102 losses, and with the way it looks right now, I wouldn't be surprised to see them lose more games than last season. Alright, so now that we went over each of the four teams, let's go over who I think is going to be the most improved and finish with the best record in 2023. I'm afraid I made it pretty obvious at this point, but it's the Cincinnati Reds. I really like the young talent they have in their starting rotation in Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo. I think they're going to take big steps forward next season. And obviously I'm thinking they're going to have more health. I think Jonathan India and Tyler Stevenson being healthy is going to be a big plus on top of the two prospects they have on the way in Marte and De La Cruz. So I could really see the Reds finishing with 70, maybe 75 wins if everything goes right. As for the three other teams, I think they're going to finish with at least 100 if not close to 100 losses yet again. I'm curious to see what you guys think on this one. Let me know what team you think could be the most improved next year. Thank you guys again so much for watching and continuing to support, and I'll see you next time.